All right, good afternoon, everybody. My name is David Mangano. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. It is currently 2.08 p.m. on September 29th, and today is the infamous leg day. Honestly, feeling pretty good today. I have heavy squats today, so I'm glad I feel good. I'm glad I feel ready. Uh, to go to the gym today and really kill it. My pre-workout meal is Kodiak cakes with three slices of regular bacon and a serving of Mrs. Butterworth's sugar-free syrup. I also have an egg in the pancakes along with some almond milk, cinnamon, and vanilla extract. So uh, I'm gonna eat this before I get to the gym. I've been experimenting with a little higher fats in my diet just to see how I feel. Um, I've been eating upwards of 400 grams of carbs a day sometimes, so I'm just trying to see if my body responds well to maybe 350 grams of carbs a day, somewhere you know in that lower lower range instead of close to 400. So I'm gonna experiment with this for the next couple weeks and see how I like it. This is not the keto diet by any means. I'm just trying to up my fat intake just by like five to 10% of my daily caloric intake uh, higher than it usually is. So I'll keep you guys updated with that. And uh, I'm gonna enjoy this meal and I'll see you guys at the gym for leg day. All right, so as you guys just saw, that was my first leg workout of the week. That is considered my heavy day, I guess you could call it. I don't squat super heavy on both of my leg days during the week. Going too heavy all the time, I found has put a lot of pressure on my joints and I just don't like the feeling of going heavy all the time. However, I do believe there is a time and place to go heavy. So once a week is enough for me. Right now, I'm about to head to the gym and get in my second leg day of the week where I don't even do any barbell squats at all. My main squat movement of the day are Bulgarian split squats, which, uh, are definitely a brutal exercise, but super effective, super great for your quads and or glutes, depending on the way you position yourself during the exercise. But I'm gonna take you guys over there and show you guys what I do on my second leg day of the week.
Fun day, huh? No. <laughs> Nick here has a rest day. Boring. For us. No, not boring. Definitely not boring. You gotta learn to enjoy your rest day. Time. What's the number one thing you learned since you joined the gym and started going consistently? Patience. Patience? And consistency. Consistency, discipline, and patience. And if you don't have those, in my opinion, you're not going to get too far. You're going to cheat yourself, lie to yourself, and give yourself information that you think's true that you see on the internet. It just doesn't work like that. You got to figure out yourself, your body type, your calories, with your goals, and have a plan. And then do it the correct way. Honestly, that was the best answer I think he probably could have given. That's why we do this. Overtraining, over. Nah, just do this, you guys. Look at shred. Overtrain. Do this every day. Look at them triceps, though. <laughs> Yo. I had 10. Alright, bro. See you later, man. Good one Thursday. Yes, sir. I absolutely just destroyed six slices of pizza and some wings and I actually feel guilt free. I don't really have any guilt because I don't eat like this all of the time. So yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed that meal and um, moving on. So at the tail end of this video, I just wanted to touch on motivation and why you might be unmotivated right now. This is not just going to be about fitness. This is going to be about other things in your life as well that you might be unmotivated to do and so on and so forth. So the first thing I want to touch on when it comes to being unmotivated is setting unrealistic goals for yourself. A lot of times we, you know, set a goal for ourselves. I'm going to use fitness as an example here because that's what my channel is mainly focused on. So let's say you have someone who really hasn't been in the fitness before. Maybe they're a little bit overweight and they decide, hey, you know what? I'm going to get into the gym and I'm going to lose X amount of weight by this time and it's going to be great. Maybe they sign up for a gym membership and, you know, they get going, they get going, they get going and they start going to the gym and they don't see instant results right away. And in their mind, they're saying, why isn't this working? This is pointless. Why am I even doing this? And then they stop. Now they don't have the motivation to go and do anything because they didn't get the results they wanted right away, right? So that all stems from setting unrealistic goals and expectations for yourself. When it comes to something like fitness, this is one of those things that takes a lot of time to really grab a hold of and say, okay, yeah, I got this. It's going to be a lot of struggling in the beginning right? But that struggle is really what makes it so worth it when you reach that first goal you set for yourself. So my advice to you when it comes to this sort of thing is set small goals for yourself first. This is a marathon, not a sprint. You don't have to get to your goals right away. It's not realistic. And most of the time it just doesn't happen, especially when you're trying to achieve something like fat loss. The only way to rush it is by starving yourself. And that is not a healthy approach 
to losing weight. So set realistic goals for yourself, I promise you. Once you start doing that and start setting these small goals that you can hit, it becomes this endless thing you chase all of the time, right? You're, you're chasing something that you'll never actually be able to catch, but that's not a bad thing. It's this endless chase towards greatness, towards becoming better. And I promise you, setting these small little goals for yourself are going to make the journey worthwhile. Another reason why you might be unmotivated to do certain things in your life is because you're comparing yourself to other people. And I completely understand where you're coming from with this because it is something I did for a really long time. I would compare my progress to someone else's and I get really discouraged and unmotivated and I'd be like, why am I not in their position? Even though that other person I'm comparing myself to probably spent hours and hours and years working to get in the position that I want to be. And a lot of times this is subconscious. We're not even always conscious of us doing it. It's honestly human nature to compare yourself to other people. But being self-aware and being aware of your own thoughts when it comes to that sort of thing is extremely important. Getting caught up in comparing yourself to other people never leads to good things. And honestly, the only person you should be comparing yourself to is yourself. Look at yourself in the mirror every single morning. That is your competition. You shouldn't be comparing your progress with somebody else's. Everyone is on their own path. Everyone is on their own journey. So take a deep dive into your thoughts. Are you subconsciously comparing yourself to other people? And is that bringing you down? And if so, you need to take a good, honest look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself what you really want for yourself and for your well-being. And once you figure that out nothing should be able to stop it. it's you versus you never forget that being unmotivated is extremely common but it is something we can all learn to get over in time with practice and with patience and with discipline we can overcome anything that life throws at us totally forgot to record an outro video last night so that's what i am doing now if you guys enjoyed the video make sure to drop a like subscribe to the channel if you're new and i'll see you guys in the next video thank you for watching